What's your favorite kind of pizza, Bob? Ooh, uh, anything with pepperonis and sausage and olives and mushrooms and, and jalapenos and chicken and what's your favorite? Uh, basically that, but none of that. Oh. Hey everybody, I'm Bob. And I'm Rudy. Hey, we're just wanted to jump in and say, hi, how are you doing? Hi, how you doing? There we are, we're done. <laughs> well, we should probably talk about something else. Oh, all right, all right, all right. You know what? Something's coming up that I'm actually kind of excited for. What's that? A meet and greet. We have a meet and greet coming up. Nice. Yeah. What's yeah. a meet and greet? What is a meet and greet? It's a meet and a greet. Meet? You get to come in and pick your meat, right? No, uh, well, no. No, no, no come on. Okay. All right, we're done. M-E-E-T. Right. It's for new new people to right. cross point or new ish you know if you've been coming for a couple months right. um we just invite you out and uh, we like to meet you you get to meet some of the meter some of the meters yeah some of the leaders of cross point and we also get to meet you and learn more about you and your family yeah. i mean i'm excited to meet new people bob but but there's i'm always... also really excited that there's going to be pizza there i love pizza Pizza's what, awesome. What was that? That was my pizza dance, everybody. Hey. Wow. Do you have a dance for every occasion? Yeah. This is my yeah. cotton candy dance. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I like that. Buster down a hot dog dance. Do you have a dance for when you're in a cabbage patch? Boop, 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 boop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I like that. It's a cabbage patch. I mean, a rabbit. Oh, oh, All right, a rabbit. so anyway, I pizza. What do we got? koala. But... <laughs> It's a chameleon. I don't know. We've gotten off track. Anyway, Come here to the we meet are. and greet. There's going to be pizza, and There's maybe pizza. Bob will do a dance. Will you be there? I hope so. I like pizza, and I want to <laughs> I want to enjoy meeting people. All right, we're going to go, because uh, service is going to start. We're going to head over to worship, we sing some yes. songs about Jesus and to Jesus. Jesus. Thanks for joining us for this, and we'll see you in a little bit. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. All right, well, that was <clears throat> fun interesting anyway but it's all right it's totally okay to have a little fun at church because God is doing something and it's okay to have joy in this place right so if you're able we're gonna ask that you stand up with us as we get ready to sing some songs like they said to Jesus and about Jesus and it's Psalm 100 it says to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and so we come into God's presence today to enter into a time of worship, to give him the honor and praise for what he's done. This is kind of an old song. And if you were out at our party a couple weeks ago, we sang this together. No, it's not you two. I know, you're like, sweet, sweet time to learn. But it sounds like it. We're going to have some fun being free in the name of Jesus today, all right? Yeah, you can put your hands together. Through you! 
concert says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So let's take some of those steps closer to God today to receive that freedom in Christ, all right? Draw closer to God and he will draw closer to you. So we gotta move. Let's sing that we will dance. We will dance till the chains fall off. 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 We will dance to 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 the chains fall off. And we will dance, dance, dance. We will dance, dance, dance. To the chains fall off. prayer today, that we would draw one step closer to finding that freedom in you. And Jesus, we honor and recognize you for who you are today. We're just going to continue on in prayer. We're going to switch a song a little bit differently. There's a song called You Deserve It All. We haven't sang it in a couple weeks. We're wanting to focus on God now. only one that deserves all of our praise and all of our attention. So we'll refocus and give that to him right now. Sing found. Found in
Crosspoint, we're all kinds of people discovering and following Jesus, and we believe that God has a plan and a purpose for you, and we hope that as you join us today, whether you're online or in person, that you're going to be discovering more about what that plan and purpose is. If you're brand new here in person, you, we have a, a welcome center we'd love for you to visit. If you happen to be online and you're new, fill out the connection card. If you visit us at our welcome center, Hi. or... Hi, or I'm new. Hi, glad oh, to meet you. Okay, hello, new person. Oh, hi. What do we? This is something. This is a gift. Oh, thank you. I'm new, and I yes. just received something. A free bag. Yeah. And these are these are at the welcome center. And it has something and in it. It has, it has oh. stuff in it. Oh. But even if you're online, you're new. You can still get one of these. You just have to fill out the connection yeah. card. Awesome. Yeah, and that connection card is important because we use that to connect with you. We want to hear about your prayer requests your comments or questions you have about the service, fill that out. We have a paper version if you're joining us in person that you can fill out. We also have an uh, online version that you can get to by scanning the QR code uh, that you'll see appearing somewhere on your screen. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We read those and we um, really enjoy connecting that way with you guys. And uh, we were gonna talk about something else that's happening if you're new, right. something else that's exciting coming up, which is a... Meet and greet. Meet and greet. Meet and Greet is going to be August 14th and 15th, right after service. And you can sign up online at go to crosspoint.com. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be fun. So you get to meet uh, staff, you get to meet pastors, you get to interact and talk and share our life stories, our hearts, and there's going to be food there. So that's how well, it's like, going to be amazing. I eat food. Yeah, you eat. He eats food. I, and it's going to be free. So there's going to be plenty of food, plenty free of food. And it's going to be something to drink, and it's going to be good. 
Awesome. Yep. That sounds great. Go to our meet and greet. Uh, we are going to be taking a slight break from Acts series and starting a little bit of a new series for us. Steve will probably be telling us more about that pretty soon. It's called Changed My Life. And so we're going to kick it on over to Steve and uh, hear more about that. Yep. So see you later, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Doing all right today? Good. We have air conditioning on for you today. Thank God. <laughs> Amen. It's August. Can you believe it? It's August of 2021. So glad you're here today. Hey, we have a, a fun thing I need, to, I need your help on real quick. Uh, we are growing as a church right now. And one thing that we love about our church and our campus, our stuff, is what happens inside here. Outside is a little wonky and weird out there in terms, in terms of finding parking. Especially if you get here later or if you're a newer person, where do you go and park on the back streets, the side streets, back behind the autos, repair places and all that? The parking we have right out here, you see the, the, the wall out here, on the other side of that, that's for people that uh, need to park there because there's some physical issues of just not being able to walk too far or that. Families with young kids and new people. We're asking you, here's our big motto here, park far, sit close. Park as far away as you can and sit as close as you can. Because usually in churches, we park as close as we can and we sit all the way in the back. Uh, I'm not calling anybody out likes to sit in the back. That's fine. But just I uh, wanted to put that out there. Here's why I'm saying this. This is in summertime when everybody's gone and like all that. We've got all kinds of new people coming and stuff like that. We always want to make sure we're, we've got a space, that we, we've got places for people as they show up here uh, trying to find a seat, a place to sit, and a place to park as well. So just a quick heads up on that. Leave the best parking for people that are newer. If you really need it, again, no shame in that. We're not, there's no going to be out there going, checking going, hmm, and taking notes on you to, to know who parked there, who didn't. But we just want to make sure we're doing our best to leave uh, open spaces and seats for people. We're starting a new series today. We are taking a break from the book of Acts for just uh, a few weeks uh, because we're doing a, a thing called Changed My Life. Verses or a verse or verses that changed my life. And the people that will be up here speaking will be talking about a verse or verses that really spoke deeply into their hearts at some point in their life. This came a few weeks ago when I was listening to a guy named Byron talk to us at a men's gathering we had here. Yeah. <laughs> this is Byron Lucas right here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Byron is our uh, coordinator, director, pastor, chief priest, grand czar <laughs> of men's ministry here at Cross Point. He goes by lots of titles, uh, does everything related to men's ministry and stuff like that. He was sharing some stuff with our guys, with our men at that thing, and I thought, we, our church needs to hear that. That's what gave birth to this series of, let's do verses like that, things that just really spoke deeply into somebody's heart. Let them share that. Let them talk about that. And so Byron's uh, coming today to share that with us. So get your Bibles out. Uh, find the book of Corinthians in your Bible. There's a note sheet that's uh, in the program somewhere uh, on some part of that. And Byron, we're all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Steve. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Am I, am I good back there, Rob? Am I, you got me? All right, bet. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Um, after I got, I was super nervous last night. I mean, I had literally had the shakes before I came up here last night. I'm a little bit better this morning. Um, I didn't have an energy drink. I haven't had any coffee this morning, so I, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, but Pastor Steve, thank you. Church, thank you. Um, I told somebody last night after I got done, I was like, you know what? I felt at home. Because I see a lot of people in the audience, and it feels like family. I've seen a lot of these people before. Um, and it's, yeah, you guys just seem like family to me. And uh, I want to kick this off. Uh, the title that you have, I think it says, A Godly Man, or Five char Characteristics of, of a Godly Man. Um, and I wanted to kind of kick this off and just give you a little bit of my background. Um, if you hear a little twang in my voice, it's like, he's somewhere from the south. I'm not quite sure. I'm from Mississippi originally. Um, and I tell people I grew up in the church, and I grew up in the church, I really grew up in the church. Um, I grew up so much in the church that church for me was like uh, Sunday morning, you know, and you spend all the mornings about from 9 to about 1, you know, Sunday school in church. And then you go back Sunday night and do the same thing over again. You just take the, uh, the Sunday school piece of it out of it. Um, you know, we did Wednesday night Bible studies. We did Thursday night choir rehearsal. We did... Monday night, young people, willing workers. We did all these things, and it was a constant normal, a part of my life growing up. My mom was my Sunday school teacher. My stepdad was kind of like the men's ministry guy. Uh, my grandfather was like the, the deacon over the men's group. Um, and my great uncle 
was the, uh, he was the assistant pastor of the church. So me and all my cousins, this was just a normal way of life of growing up in the South. And unlike today, you know, I'm completely dressed down. If I was there today, they'd be like, dude, what are you wearing? You can't get in the church with that. <laughs> Um, but I say that to kind of give you some background of where I'm from. I left Mississippi. Um, I came out to Southern California. I joined the Marine Corps. And I kind of went, um, hoorah, absolutely. I kind of went off the, you know, left the faith and did the things that every probably crazy Marine has possibly tried. But uh, did some things and, and always had that tug in my heart of, of Byron, what are you doing? Like, where are you, where are you going with this? What are you doing? And um, met my wife. Um, she's not here this weekend. She's out of town visiting family. Um, had two beautiful kids. And, you know, we did life together. And, and we kind of grew up. And, and God was tugging on my heart when we lived down in San Diego um, before we moved up to, here to the Valley in 2010. Um, but it was like, you know, you need to get your butt back in church. Like, where are you? You know, my mom was like, hey, what, what church are you going to now? What are you doing at the church? Because you know how I raise you. You know what you're supposed to be doing. Like, mom, you're killing me, man. Like, come on. So finally, you know, long story short, we moved, you know, up to the valley. I got involved in our church in San Diego. I rededicated my life back, back to Christ. Um, and here I am. I'm at, you know, been here since 2012 at, at Cross Point. I love it. I enjoy it. Um, and, and I just want to give you that background for me to this message that we did a few weeks ago at Hobby Weekend. Um, and if you have your Bibles open, I think it's Bibles on the floor. Turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. I think specifically we're in the ESV for this title, for this kind of this subject. Um, and it reads, uh, if you have it, if you don't have it on a, a, a Bible next to you, pull out your phones, pull up the app, search it on Google. I think Pastor Steve always says we have free Wi-Fi, so take advantage of it. So. But it reads, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all you do, do in love. In Acts chapter 18, we pick up Paul being in the city of Corinth. He's there about a year and a half, and uh, he's preaching the gospel. People are becoming believers. Um, and Paul, after that, he, he moves on to different cities, different places, and he's continuing to teach. But Paul gets a report um, that some followers in the city of Corinth are doing something that they really shouldn't be doing. Um, and Paul starts to pin letters back to the city for some information to kind of correct what's going on. And when you go through this, um, you will kind of miss it because one thing Paul does in his teaching, if you ever study a little bit about Paul, what he will do, he will ask a question and he will respond with it with the gospel. Um, so when you look at the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, it's kind of broken down into sections where he's talking about, you know, gathering at the church, sexual immor immorality, the resurrection. So he kind of does that in his teaching. But if you're reading through this, I kind of, I mentioned last night, I was like, it's almost like you have a family member from, Temecula, and they moved out to Texas somewhere, and they're coming back. And as they're coming back, they're saying, hey, when I get to Temecula, Marietta, look, I want to stop by in and out I'm going to go stop by my friends here and visit this. And, and, and he puts this plug in here, and it says, be watchful. And he's like giving some guidance, some information for what to do. And I want to kick this off of this first section, number one, be, be, be watchful. Um, and I took this as to be, be aware, to be on guard. To be vigilant, to keep an attentive eye. And you may say, uh, Byron, why should, I be, why should I be watchful? 1 Peter 5 and 8, it says, in summary, stay alert, watch out. Because the devil, our enemy, is like a roaring lion seeking, seeking whom he may devour. John 10 and 10 says the thief came, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If nobody has ever told you this, I want to give you some information this morning that there's an adversary out here every day that's trying to kill you. He's trying to destroy your life. He's trying to take something from you. See, people who are not inside of the church and people who are not following, the devil is like, I already have them already. I don't need, I know exactly where they're going to end up. But for you people here, it's like the devil is after you. If you don't realize that, I just want to provide that information to you. So you need to be watchful today. And you not only need to be watchful for yourself, but you need to be watchful for your friends, your neighbors, your family, your small groups here, your church, everybody in your community, you need to be watchful. You know, my wife was a 911 dispatcher for about seven, eight years. And 
she would come home on certain days. If the first two or three years I picked up on it, within 30 seconds I could look at her and tell her that was a problem, that something wasn't quite right with her. And what I soon realized was that those were the days that I found that she had a death on the phone call. She had a family member that was screaming at the top of their lungs in the ear that somebody was found or somebody didn't make it. So the thing that I learned to do after three or four or five years was to tell my kids, like, hey, give mom a few minutes. I had to be watchful over my, over my, my wife and my kids. Hey, just let mom come in the house. Let her relax. Let her go, you know, let her go water her plants. Let her go do her thing so she can have a little bit of time. I had to be watchful over my family. And I'm asking you this not only to be watchful over your family, but to be watchful over your spirit. What are you watching? What YouTube channels are you sitting binging day in and day out? What movies? What talk radio? What are the things that you are consistently doing in your life that you know you probably shouldn't be doing that you really need to be watchful for? Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, it says, so you too must keep watch. For you don't know what day the Lord is coming. Listen to me, church. He is coming back, whether you believe it or not. Pastor Steve said a few weeks ago, every knee shall bow. My question to you is, what do you believe? If you believe that, then you, by default, you would be watchful. Because we don't know what day the Lord is coming, what day the Lord is returning. We have to be watchful. Number two, stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith is... You know, maybe we go to church, we get in a routine, and we go on Sunday after Sunday, and then we stop going. We start serving at the church on a regular basis. We're going, we're doing good, and all of a sudden you take a vacation, a trip. You know, kids got this on the weekend, and we stop serving. And my thing is, I, I, I told our high school students a few weeks ago, I told them, anything that you practice, you will get good at. If you practice sin, I promise you, you will get really, really good at it. I know some people who are really, really good at it. <laughs> and the reason we can't sometimes stand firm in my faith is because we don't value it. One of our high school students who we was talking, we were laughing over here in the corner a couple weeks ago, and I said, uh, you skateboard, right? He was like, yeah. I said, how long have you been skateboarding? He said, oh, Mr. Byron, I've been skateboarding about three, four or five years. I'm like, okay, great. I said, how good are you at it now? He was like, I'm pretty good. I'm like, really? I'm like, so when you started out skateboarding, you know, how good was you? He was like, ah, I got, you know, bumps and bruises, and I wasn't that good. And I said, okay, on a scale of 1 to 100, what percentage would you say you skateboard on a regular basis? And he says, oh, man, Mr. Byron, COVID, no school? He was like, 75, 80%. I'm skateboarding. He's like, I'm getting it in. I'm like, okay, great. And I'm like, with skateboarding, did you learn some tricks of skateboarding, you know, kick flip, the ollie, back flip, whatever you call it, you know? And he was like, oh yeah, Mr. Byron, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, I'm good, I'm like, really? And I'm like, so when people come up to you and you've been skateboarding for the past four or five years and you went from zero to wherever you're at right now, I was like, do you get in arguments over people about that you can't do this trick or you can't do that trick? He was like, absolutely not. I said, why not? He said, because I know how to do it. He said, you see the scrapes I got on my arm? You see what I went through? He said, I lived it already. I said, you're exactly right. That's exactly how faith is. You go through it. You practice it. Day after day after day. If you value it, you will do it. I promise you, if you don't value it, you won't do it. But I watch we as people, and I'll tell you, if you believe that Showing up to a church service on Sunday morning, a Saturday night, going to a small group on the, during the week. If you feel like that's all the practice that you're going to get, you're never going to get good at it. It's going to be hard. You got to do this daily. Study, read, have an accountability partner, pray. All those things in order to get better in your faith. And I mentioned this, I said, you know, typically this type of message, when you're standing your faith, it means by putting on the whole armor of God. And typically when you do a, hear a whole armor of God, you hear a pastor, he'll do a sermon series, and it'll be 
the first week would be the belt of truth, and the second week the breastplate of righteousness, and then the sword of the spirit, and so on and so on. And that's in Ephesians 6. And then usually we'll break it down, and there'll be a sermon series, and you'll go through it. But I want to work on number one, which was belt of truth. My question to you tonight, church, I mean, this morning, what is your truth? What is your truth? I think on the Instagram page this week, it said, the Bible is source and Jesus is central. Do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? No one gets to the Father except through Jesus. Do you believe that if you slap me on the right cheek, what I have to do is turn the other cheek? I'm not supposed to curse you out in the parking lot. I'm not supposed to post about you on social media. The Bible says be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do you believe that as a truth? The one that pinged me a lot this year, the services we're having to get takeout, it says it's better to give than to receive. I never said if the service was worth it or not. This one helped me a whole lot over the past year. A lot of good friends of mine, a lot of people. I heard, I, we, we, we had a panel up here this past Tuesday, and one of our leaders, all of our leaders was up here, and the students were able to text in mes messages and ask our leaders questions. And I heard one of the most epic things I ever heard was that one of our leaders got up here and she said, I had one of the worst years in 2020. And the question that came up was, do you sometimes ask God why? And she said, absolutely I did. Absolutely. She was like, I love to go out. I love to hang out with friends. I love to do this. I love to do that. I don't want to be stuck in the house with people all day. I want to be, I want to be out and, and do something. And she said, sometimes you do. She said, like, but in those times, you got to go seek wise counsel. And that's what she did. And she said, and I got better and I got through it. One of the things that I realized in 2020, it says in Proverbs 26 and 4, it says, don't argue with a fool. <laughs> now, your next question is probably going to be borrowing, well, what is a fool? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Proverbs 18 and 2 says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his own opinion. My question to you, what fool are you listening to today? Because we all do it. Talk radio podcasts, our favorite news channel. One last one, is, and this is one that I see a lot of. It says, don't judge others. Because that same high standard that you constantly judge other people, Matthew 7, 1 and 2, it says, God will use that same, extent, that same standard on you. Number three. Act like men or, or be courageous. And this could go either way. This is not specifically for men. We did it at a hobby weekend, but yeah. Um, this goes for, our, for women in our church too. Grow up. No more excuses. You need to own it. You need to own it. You need to confess it to God exactly whatever that struggle is that you're going through. I spoke to a men's uh, fire a few months ago, and I asked a question. I said, when you're going through trials and tribulations in your life, who do you call? Do you call your confirmation coach or your correction coach? Because we have both of them. And you know exactly who your confirmation coach is. Some of us have two or three confirmation coaches. Sometimes we go to the barbershop and get a haircut. We talk to our confirmation coach. We go to the salon and we talk to our confirmation coach. Who are you talking to? Because your confirmation coach will do something. Your confirmation will confirm, affirm, and even reaffirm what you already believe about a situation. Because you're not looking to change. You're looking to stay because you want to be right. I heard my daughter on the phone the other night talking with one of her uh, teammates from college, and <laughs> all I heard was, so what? You, you right. Okay, so you want a cookie? You want a golden star? Is that what you want? You just want to be right? And I was like, wow, like, you're right. Like, you, we want to be right. Being right feels good. But being right in God's eyes is way much better than just being right in our own eyes. Do you seek wise counsel when you're going through these times? And if you don't have a correction coach, my question to you is go find one. 
can you please go find somebody who's going to tell you 100%, hey, bro, you probably should have put some deodorant on this morning. I got some in the car. Can you go? You need people like this in your life. You need people to be brutally honest with you and will tell you not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Are you willing to pick up the word of God and really deal with being courageous, with growing up, with no more excuses, with owning whatever it is you have going on in your life? It's time to be responsible. It's time to be brave. It's time to be courageous. Number four, be strong. Strong believers, strong followers, they humble themselves and they admit their weaknesses. They lead their families. I mentioned this the other day. It came to me. We was going through this message, and, and the leadership sits with us and just makes sure that, you know, we're covering all bases and we don't say anything that's, you know, not in alignment with the Bible truth. And it, for whatever reason, it hit me, and I, and I put this down. It was, don't just go to church with your families, but take your families to church. Don't just go to church with your families. Take your families to church. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul says, that's why I take pleasure in my weakness and insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Strong believers know their strength comes from God. Not from the gym. I go. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 reads, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Endurance, perseverance, it equals your faith. There's a few people who I hang out with and I talk to here at the church um, the one of the things I have mentioned to a lot of people, I said, be careful what you pray for. You just might get it. Because what you believe that God has a plan for you won't look like what you want. So I was one of those people who would, I always wanted to do for other people. I never wanted anybody to do anything for me. So I would go help and I would go do this and I would go do that. And I'd be like, no, I'll do it. I'll take care of it. No, let me do it. Do it. Let me take care of it. And God says, we need to work on you for that. And I also said a prayer in a small group and said, you know what, I want to spend some more time with my kids before they go off to college. They're, they're teenagers, they're playing sports, they're living life, they're going to school, they're enjoying. And I was like, God, I really want to, but I got this job and I'm traveling overseas and, you know, I don't mind the travel. I like the money, I'm getting paid, I can take care of my family, but this is getting hard. I want to spend some time with my family. And on a Tuesday night, I dropped them off at high school ministry and I drive back across town to South Temecula to go to the park to run some sprint drills with a friend of mine, and I sever my right Achilles tendon completely. This person picks up the phone, calls my wife, like, hey, he's hurt, can you come over? She just pulls up, get me to urgent care, and I'm sitting in urgent care, sitting next to her, and I'm laughing. And you might say, Byron, why are you laughing? And I thought about it. Be careful what you pray for. You just might get it. That Tuesday before, my daughter had just got her driver's permit to be able to drive with an adult over the age of 18. I spent the whole summer with her. She took me to every appointment. Church, the definition of perseverance, it says the effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failures, or oppositions. It's going to happen. Somebody told me a long time ago, I said, either you are coming out of a storm, going into a storm, or you're already in it. It's going to happen. Be strong and persevere. Number five, do it all in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses uh, 4 through 13, it reads, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. It keeps no record of wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every 
circumstance. The one that stuck out to me the past couple weeks as I was reading this, a few of them, but the one specifically was, it keeps no record of wrong. And if you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're going to wear the T-shirts, if you're going to put the stickers on your car, my question to you is, why do you keep bringing up the same stuff that you've been mad and pissed off about the past couple of years? Because if you say you love God the way you're supposed to love him, I didn't write this. It says it keeps no records of wrongs. You know exactly what you've been bringing up. And for a lot of you, you're not saying it to anyone. You're bringing it up in your heart, you're bringing it up in your mind, and you're bringing it up in your spirit, and you're pissed off about it, and you need to let it go. It says love is patient. It says love is kind. And the last portion of it says love never gives up because God would not give up on you. You can never lose faith. 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 11, it says, When I was a child, I spoke and I thought and I reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. When are you going to put away these childish things? When? You got to put away these childish things in order to let go of some things. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to go through. I know it's frustrating. I know a lot of people here have been hurt. And you're like, Byron, there's just no way in the world I could ever let that go. You just don't understand what that person did to me or that group of people did to me. I'm here to tell you, God is much bigger than that. Much bigger than that. Verse 13, it reads, three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this is love. Church, I would let you know that love God, love people, and everything we do, we do it in love. I'll ask the, uh, the band to come back up right now. Paul gave these instructions back to the people of, uh, of Corinthians of Corinth, and these same exact instructions apply to all of us today. We cannot get through life. And what happens is when you go through this, these, these five, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all you do in love, you're going to do these repetitively. You're going to do these over and over and over again. I don't know where you're at right now, but you may, be, you may need to be watchful. You may right now somewhere, you may need to stand firm in your faith. Something, the adversary is after you for some reason, and you just got to stand firm. I know it's hard because you don't believe it, but you just got to stay with it. If we're going to be the followers of Jesus Christ, if we're going to be the salt of the earth, if we're going to be the light upon the hill, the coaches in the community, the teachers at the school, the person checking us out at the grocery store, this is who we have to be. Stay strong, stand firm, be aware, own your own responsibilities. I need for you to own it. Take responsibility for you. Take responsibility for your faith. And last but not least, walk it out in love. Do it in love. Heavenly Father, Jesus, thank you for bringing us in today. And Jesus, I just ask that somebody in the house this morning needed to hear this message. Somebody in the house this morning, heart is erupting inside because something was pierced, something was touched, something that somebody's been holding on to this morning that they need to let go of. And Father, I just ask this morning that whoever that person is, let this be the message to start them on that journey. Let this be the person on that journey to to, to start over again and if somebody is new to the faith father let them today be the person that they can kick this off we do this in your name amen Byron thank you wow whenever a pastor has somebody come in to do a message. He always wants to get up here and preach a second message. I'm not going to do any of that today. 
You heard it today straight, undiluted, uncensored, unfiltered, just boom. God wants to do something and say something to us in our hearts and souls right now. And so our band is going to do some songs to give us a chance to sit here with this, to let it marinate down into our souls, let, let it get down in there. And so while we do that, we're going to sing. We're going to give you a chance to also come to tables of communion in the four corners of the room. It's bread and juice that's there. Uh, the bread symbolizes the body of Jesus. The juice symbolizes his blood. Jesus told us 2,000 years ago, when you gather together all the time, remember me. And he gave us a simple way to do it with simple, non-complicated elements of bread and wine. And it's fascinating too. Byron's last point today was do everything in love. Jesus tells us do everything in love, but he does not just tell us to do everything in love. He gives us the ultimate example by laying his life down, not for people who were great, wonderful, beautiful, amazing people, for wretched, black-hearted sinners like you and me. And that's why we celebrate communion here and we sing these songs together today. So, Holy Spirit, no, I forgot one thing, I'm sorry. Our prayer team is also in the back. If you have anything going on in your heart and soul today, maybe something that Byron said to you right here today, go, I need to, I need to come clean with that, I need some help. Want somebody to pray for me about that? Or you just got stuff going on. Back there in the back are people that will pray with you as we get up and people will be moving around to receive uh, communion at the various places here in the house. Jesus, today, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And God, we don't want that just to be a little slogan and a song. God, you are welcome here in every single person's life who's here today, whatever they need from you, whether it is some just good encouragement to just keep going, whether it's some deep conviction with some things or some next steps you want to move us to. God, just do your work right here, right now.
You are. 
Amen. We put our trust firmly in Jesus Christ, and we will not be shaken in his name. And by his truth, we allow his love to guide us. We're going to bring up the lights right now and do something a little different. So don't be shocked, but if you're able to stand with us as we close out service today, we thought it would be fitting as Myron, uh, Byron was inspired by one of the songs that has really come out of men's ministry that has been an anthem for some of our guys, right, that we would go out on kind of an up note today and thinking about the lyrics of this song that help us remember why we have the courage that we have as believers and if we don't know Jesus yet, to know that we can have that courage as we know our king is alive. All right, you know this one? I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. a little louder. Man, our hosts are coming down the aisles. They're going to pass buckets through right now. Drop your connection card in there. If you're giving to support the church and have that with you today, 
Drop that in those buckets as well as they go by. What a great, great message today, Byron. Thank you so much for just laying that out. Just straightforward, awesome, amazing. Uh, our prayer team is still at the back of the house today. As you are, are here and maybe still need prayer, people will be coming and going every place. They're right there in the back of the house. Uh, it's really hot already today, but when you got to church, it's even hotter now. So stay inside, enjoy the air conditioning. And here's the deal. Our whole deal here every week here is don't go find the people you already know. Find someone you don't know. We found out yesterday, somebody said, I met somebody who I thought was brand new. They've been coming to church longer than I have. That happens all the time here. So meet somebody around you you don't know, and we'll see you guys here next weekend. Have a great one.